Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce myself. I am Dania. I will be the host uh, of the event today. So welcome to this virtual event, which is the collaboration of in Geophysical Engineering uh, ITS with Atorin, virtual traveling to wonderful Bromo. First of all, I would like to give warm greetings for the representative of Tarlac Agricultural University. Good morning, sir and madam. And then also great uh, greetings for the head of Geophysical Engineering Department, uh, Dr. Duadesa Warnana. Good morning, sir. Hello, morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And last but not least, warm greetings for internship students from Geodetic Engineering and Agricultural and Biosystem Engineering of Tarlac Agricultural University. Good morning, all students. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first stage, I would like uh, to invite Dr. Duade Sawarnana as the head of Geophysical Engineering Department to give uh, the opening speech to Dr. Duade Sawarnana. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Mbak Dania. Uh, good morning all, to all of you uh, on behalf of ITS. I want to thank you very much for uh, today. Honorable, uh, my uh, lecture from uh, Geophysical Engineering ITS and also a representative from uh, University of Agriculture Tarlac. And also a very warm welcome to all participants, from, uh, students from uh, Agriculture Tarlac University. Today I am very happy uh, to tell you that uh, we will go to uh, Bromo Mountain, I think, yes. As uh Brahma mountain is uh, one of uh mountain in East Java that I think is uh, very uh, very very wonderful yes maybe uh Ibu Dini will be tell us about uh, more detail about uh Brahma mountain so uh I hope that we will uh, have uh, a good traveling and have and, and also enjoy a uh, traveling. So, for our participant, please enjoy your traveling via virtual and. Uh, before starting this program, I also I would like to honor our, our our uh our friend uh, from Autorin Iputini yeah on stage. So please enjoy your uh virtual traveling. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Anang or uh, Dr. Duade Sawarnana for the opening speech. And uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we will get into the main event, which is virtual traveling of wonderful Bromo. So I would like to invite the moderator today, uh, Mrs. Foni from Atorin. So Mrs. Foni, the screen is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Diana. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Let me introduce myself. My name is Foni and also there is Oka from Atwin. And we are from Atwin. We will be the co-host in this virtual tour. Welcome to the virtual tour, Wonderful Bromo. This virtual traveling is very special because Atwin will invite all of you to Bromo and the surrounding area, which is has interesting natural and cultural heritage for us to know this morning. So this uh, morning, we will be guided directly by the one and only Miss Dini. She is one of the tour guide in Bromo and Malang. Well, then I want to say hello first to Miss Dini. Hello, Miss Dini. Hello, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Miss Dini. How are you, Miss Dini? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. How is Bromo? <laughs> uh, Bromo is still cold. <laughs> 
now it is not empty. Okay. okay. Okay, Miss Dini and all friends, before we start, there are a few things that I want to say regarding this morning virtual tour because we depend on the internet. So if there is a network interruption and this event is stopped, don't worry because we will send the new link all of you immediately. And if this event cannot continue because of these things, we will have the video with Miss Dini and then we will send the video recording to all of you. And if there anyone want to ask, please ask through the chat box and later will be answered by Miss Dini or you can ask directly. So there will be time for creation session after the virtual tour. Please click on the raise hand featured letter. Me as the co-host will invite you to directly ask the question to Miss Dini. And then make sure to follow the event until the end because we will discover Bromo and the surrounding area and also there will be a photo session. In addition, if you are uh, you are also welcome to share your experience following this virtual tour event. And if you want to update on Instagram, don't forget tag or mention us at atreen.official. And now with that further ado, let's start the virtual tour to Miss Dini. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you, Miss Pony. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to meet all of you today in our virtual tour. And let me introduce myself. My name is Dini Rahmawati and I'm a tour guide who will accompany you today. So I hope all of you is in a good health and condition due to, uh, to the pandemic now. And uh, we will enjoy this virtual tour with happy uh, and happiness will raise our immunities. Right? Okay, welcome to Bromo. Uh, maybe you have heard about Bromo. Bromo is one of the 10 uh, priority uh, tourism in Indonesia. And Bromo is located in East Java province. Uh, Java Island has five uh, provinces, uh, Banten, a uh, special region of Jakarta, uh, West Java, Central Java, and East Java, and Bromo is located in East Java province. And for geographic and administrative, administrative location, Bromo Tengger Semeru National Park is located, uh, belongs to four administrative areas. Uh, such as Malang Regency, Pasuruan Regency, Lumajang Regency, and Probolinggo Regency. So it covers a huge area, more than 50,000 hectares, and with a sea of sand. And next, Miss uh, Mas Oka. Okay, uh, okay uh, now we will learn some language of Tengger. So in Bromo Tengger Semeru is inhabited by the uh, Tengger tribe, and there are some language uh, different with uh, the commonly uh, Japanese used in Java, uh, like uh, what in English they say Paran, Will they say Kate, Me or I is Reang. Reang is for a uh, man, and Isun like me is for uh, women. Okay. audio okay if you heard, are you hear my voice now is it clear okay can, can uh, they say bisa how they say jare you you for polite is rika and sira is for common uh, friend is uh, sira um Met is campu and etc. And and then uh, the final is thank you. Thank you is kesun in their language. Uh, okay, I assume all of you come from Surabaya and come to Malang by train. So I will pick you up, everyone, at Malang Kota Baru Station at the arrival gate. And the station is one of the cultural heritage building in Malang City. Uh, Maybe we continue to Malang Kota Baru Station, Mas Oka. Okay, there are uh, many destinations we will go today. We will start uh, from Malang Kota Baru Station, and I will pick you up, everyone, at Malang Kota Baru Station. This is one of the cultural heritage, uh, especially in Malang City and was built by the, the Dutch government in 1879. And the first uh, day 
uh, built uh, the gates, uh, the entrance gate in the east. And when uh, the Dutch government renovated it in 1938, they changed the main gate to the west uh, because the city hall is in the west. And uh, in, 19, uh, in 2019, the Indonesian government uh, tried to renovate again, and now the main gate is uh, facing, uh, facing the east. But I will pick you up in the arrival gate, and the arrival gate is in the west. So uh, before uh, it's renovated, uh, the Dutch government also built a tunnel between platforms because of the security reason ahead of the World War at the time. So this is the Malang Kota Baru. This is the front of the Malang Kota Baru. There are some statue and yes. Sorry. Okay, I'll continue. This is Malang Station Malang or Malang Kota Baru Station, and I will pick you up here. And because we will go to Bromo and uh, private cars it is pro uh, prohibited to entering the Bromo Tengger Semeru area, uh, area. So we will uh, rent a four wheel drive or we call it Jeep Bromo because uh, the road to Bromo is very steep and free. Uh, so we have to go with Jeep and I will pick you with Jeep to Bromo. After after in the sta uh, station, we will go to the first destination. We will go to Coban Pelangi. Coban Pelangi is term Coban is term used by the local uh, resident in Malang to call waterfalls. And Pelangi is rainbow, so Coban Pelangi is a uh, rainbow waterfall. Uh, Coban Pelangi is located in the village of Gubuk Klaka, Kuncokusumo district. And why it called Coban Pelangi? Because at certain times, a uh, rainbow can be seen in this waterfall. Uh, this is the, you can see the photos. And this is uh, Coban Pelangi. And it's surrounded by Bromo Tengger, uh, Bromo Tengger Semeru National Park and has a height of 110 meters. And the temperature is about uh, like uh, 19 uh, degrees centigrade till 23 degrees centi centigrade. So I, uh, uh, I will advise you to bring your warm clothes or jacket when visiting this waterfall. And about the ticket price for the waterfalls is about 10,000 rupiah. is less than $1 uh, US per person for locals and for international visitors, it uh, five, 15,000 rupiah per person. And you can see Hello, the okay. rainbow. Yes? Oh, sorry for the interruption. Yes? Uh, we will hear uh, welcoming remarks from Bu Okta. Okay. Firstly, sorry, everyone. Okay, to Bu Okta, please. Okay, yes, please. Yes, yeah, Bu Oin, you can give the opening remarks. Um. Please, wait a second. Hello? Hello, Bu. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Oyen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry if um, I'm being late. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, wonderful event. Um, I watched a bit about the virtual traveling uh, to wonderful Bromo that's been uh, presented by uh, Budini. Um, I know it's, uh, it's very unfortunate for uh, all of us that we cannot uh, visit the Bromo physically. 
and if you able to and if you have any chance in the future you should do you should do that because um the scenery is very breathtaking it's a very amazing place and um malang the place that uh, budini has been shown to you it's a very nice uh, city with a very warm and uh, welcoming people so uh i know it's only the virtual tour but I think it's something that will encourage you to come and experience uh, Indonesia, East Java, and Bromo by yourself in the future. Um, and I'm also excited that this, this is the uh, second time for uh, Tarlak Agriculture uh, University students to have an internship program at the geomatics and geophysics. And we are really hopeful that uh, in the next future, in the next opportunities, um, we will have more uh, T TAU students to, uh, to do internships or exchange in ITS. And also um, I hear that uh, geomatics and geophysics students also will uh, do exchange, must he hint? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, that's very wonderful. That's the, the meaning of the uh, partnerships. And we're really uh, happy that this mobility program um, has been done well. Congratulations to TAU and also to Geophysics Department. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Mrs. Okta. Um, maybe we will continue the first water. So, Miss Dini, you can continue it. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, I'll continue the first water. Um, okay. Uh, we're reaching the Choban Plangi now. Okay. Uh, in Choban Plangi, the temperature is uh, about 19 degrees centigrade until 23 degrees centigrade. And you have to bring your warm clothes or jacket because it's very cold. And the journey to the waterfalls is about one kilometer by walk and from the entrance gate to the waterfall. And visitors uh, should be very careful because the roads are steep and slippery, uh, especially in the rainy season. Uh, so I advise you to come in drought season, in dry season. So, uh, and when we go to the waterfalls, you will pass the iconic bamboo bridge at Choban Plangi. And this bamboo bridge is also uh, like a, often used like a photo, sh a photo background, photo shoot background. And you can play uh, in water uh, next to the waterfalls, about 50 meters from the waterfalls, because you are prohibited to get uh, next uh, to the waterfall due to strong water flow and it is uh, very quite dangerous. So uh, in our waterfall area, you can enjoy uh, another, another uh, facilities like you can ride horses uh, because the horses is tame and uh, they have their handler and the price of uh, the fee to uh, ride horses is about 10,000 rupiah per person for 30 minutes. And maybe you want to have a uh, river tubing in, uh, in the river. And the, fee, uh, the price is about uh, 10,000 until 20,000 rupiah per person. And then you can camp here. And if you want to get there without uh, bringing uh, the equipment this uh, they uh, give uh, they uh, provide they provide the camping gear and you just have to go there with your food and beverage and have a wonderful night in in the next of the waterfall in the camping area and you can go rafting uh, it's about it's uh, quite challenging for the beginners who want to know and try uh, the spot and the price is quite affordable. It's just 35,000 rupiah per person. And one team can accommodate uh, four until five uh, people. So the best time to visit uh, the Choban Plangi is uh, 10 p.m. until uh, 
uh, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. when the sun shines uh, so brightly and we can see the rainbow uh, clearly. And there are some uh, public toilets and prayer rooms and dining areas and special toilets for bathing and gazebo. So you don't, uh, you will enjoy the facilities and see the scenery and uh, enjoy the the waterfalls. Okay. Uh, next, we are going to Nadas. Nadas is uh, one of the highest village in Java. Uh, Nadas is derived from the name of the fennel plant uh, called Adas. Adas is fennel plant, and fennel smells like uh, eucalyptus and can be used like uh, to uh, remedy for asthma. And when you come to Ngadas, Ngadas is one of the village for Tengarist uh, tribe. So the inhabitant of the Bromo Tengar Sumeru is Tengar, called Tengar tribe. And they have their common uh, greetings. Uh, we say, they say, Hong Ulun Basuki Langeng. And it means, may God give peace, prosperity, and health to all of us. So when they call, uh, when they say Hong Ulun Basuki Langeng, we, we answered Langeng Basuki. It's like, like this. And then uh, this uh, village is perched at 2,150 meters above the level. Uh, level. And the sky is uh, hovering with clouds and temperature is about around so zero until 25 degrees centigrade. And in dry season, even uh, it, uh, can, uh, it can be a frost uh, in the leaves. And Ladas has been integrated as a traditional cultural village and hold as official tourism village since 2007. And the community of Tingeris also exists in Pasuruan, Probolinggo, Malang, and uh, Lumajang. So the Ngadas is in Malang Regencies. And they believe they are to uh, descendant of the legendary Roro Anteng and Joko, Joko Segar. Uh, Roro Anteng is the daughter of the king of Majapahit. And while Joko Segar was the son of Brahma, Brahma is like a priest, a higher priest in Hinduism. And they got married and they also took refugee in the mountainous area in East Java uh, back then. And Roro Anteng and Joko Segar become leaders in the region, the, in this uh, area, in Bromo Tengar Semeru area. And the Tengar tribe worship uh, uh, spirits and they have sp uh, special rituals. Even though they have uh, their own religion like uh, Buddhist, Buddh uh, Buddhism, uh, Islam, or uh, Hinduism, they uh, always uh, have their own rituals uh, due to the, their ancestor, and they have uh, special offerings to uh, the spirits, like uh, sajenan is presented to the guardian by the priest in formal liturgy, and uh, sajenan is uh, presented during weddings or on special occasion. And then suguhan, suguhan is offered to uh, to their ancestral spirit by the ordinary Tengger Hindus uh, place. And tamping is like uh, uh, offerings to evil spirit toward of uh, bad luck and typically consists of meat, rice, and banana, and wrap and, and, and banana leaves and put at places such as cemeteries, bridge, and road intersection. If you uh, call, if you have been go to Bali, there are same, same, the similar uh, offering. Uh, they put the thumping in the road or uh, near the intersections, and uh, the priests call dukun, or sometimes uh, they call uh, rapu or uh, the priest, the high priest. And every village has the only one uh, priest, and it's a uh, Possessed by the really uh, passes down from father to son, okay. And in Adas, uh, okay, this uh, you can see Adas plant here or fennel plant here, and the plant is uh, has a yellow flower, and the smell is very good. I mean, it's uh, fresh. And Bromo Tengger Semeru is uh, now 
uh, has uh, support uh, supported by the government, so the, uh, they have a uh, better roads and hot mix road. Uh, even though the street is uh, narrow in the in uh, Nadas, uh, there are some uh, slopes and hilly uh, in uh, right and your uh, left. And Nadas is about 30 kilometers away from Malang. And if you want to get to know about the Tengaris a tribe, tribe, the Tengaris tribe, you have to go to Nadas. And uh, most of Nadas uh, work as a farmers, and their feet are on mountain slopes and hilly peaks, and they have their agricultural products like uh, potatoes or cabbage or carrots or spring onion, and maybe uh, Mas Oka can. Uh, start the video about Nadas to the audience to know about more about Nadas. I suggest you have to bring your own jacket yes because the the air is very cold so uh now does help uh they have a traditional ceremonies uh such as nyat nyat kasada nyat nyat kasada is a ceremony uh, and always awaited by local and foreign tourists and it's often referred to as kasodo just kasodo ceremony is uh, performed by the Hindu Tengger community and held every 14th of the month of Kasodo or the 10th uh, month. This is from and offerings the Sang Hyang Widi or God uh, in many, his manifestation as Batara Brahma. And the offerings is uh, thrown to the uh, creator of Mount Bromo. And then uh, we have Karo. Karo for this tribe, Karo is the biggest and most anticipated holiday. And they held the Karo about 15 days. So when the Karo uh, holiday is coming, sometimes uh, Bromo Tengger Smeru is prohibited for tourists to come to uh, this place because they have their ceremony. And the Karo holiday is usually held after Nyepi and includes a period of agricultural products or and dancing and they proceed with visiting neighbors and relatives and the ritual for the karo holiday is led by ratu they call it ratu but ratu is a uh, saman shaman uh, and but the saman is a man not a woman we, we, uh, even though they call it ratu or queen and the third uh, traditional a ceremony is Ojung. Ojung is a traditional art uh, and similar like uh, fighting people one on one and the weapon used by weapon and not only art but this is a ritual to ask God for rain. So this is usually done during the dry season and before Ojung begins, uh, usually they, uh, uh, they help a dance performance first uh, called Old Mass Den and Single Wulung Dance. And the fourth uh, ceremony they held is Entas Entas. Entas Entas is intent to purify the spirits or people who have died in order to get better place. And the, the last is Unan Unan. Unan Unan is held uh, every five years according to the Tengger tribe calendar uh, to clean the village from calamity. And you can see Jess Gunung Bromo. 
uh, the last Jazz Gunung Bromo it held in 2019 because in 2020 it has uh, we have uh, the pandemic. So the inhabitant of Tenggara Tribe contribute to have sarung in uh, the everyday occasion, and uh, they have to uh, wear sarung because the sarung has uh, a pride, uh, has also the pride and to be ancestral heritage that must be preserved by them, and it used based on activity and gender. So. The sarung has become symbol for the Tengger community and its function maintains safety from and also the sarung serves to warm the body. And there are some uh, several ways to wear sarung for men. I would like to practice how they wear sarung. Okay. Commonly uh, for you can hear my voice. Okay. Commonly for uh, everyday life, sarung worn by men by slinging it. This is called sengkeletan. This is sengkeletan. And sempetan is they wear sarung waistline, like uh, commonly used in Indonesian people. Uh, Maybe in Muslim, they go to prayer, a man go to prayer with like this. And men wear sarung called simple, simple wolu or eight knot. No, eight knot. The sarung. I have to use this. Uh, they uh, wear sarung like this uh, to neck warmer. And sarung can be used like this. It's used to cover the face uh, from the cold and dust and commonly used by the delivery taxis and tourists who come to Tengger often use this type of sarung. And then uh, sembong, they wear sarung like this. Uh, it's used as a complement to clothing while working in the field or uh, has another meaning as a symbol of the courage of the tender man. And men use sarung called kudungan like this to cover uh, their head and to warm their head from the cold temperatures like this. Okay, kudungan. And commonly they use sarung like this. They fold the sarong into two parts and not. And they uh, put their belonging here. They put their belonging here. And it's called lampin. And sometimes there are so many ways to wear sarong in the. This. They call pudengan is to cover or for head protector. And for women, uh, sarung is, has their own social status. Like for women, uh, like this, not in the back. It symbolizes that she is a virgin and do not have partners. And when the sarong not in the front. It means the, uh, they have married. It's a married woman. And when the knot is in the right, like this, the girl is still the virgin and they have boyfriend or partner. And when the knot is in the left, it means she is a widow. So there are so many ways to ways uh, to wear sarung, and every uh, ways is uh, have their own meaning, and 
besides sarung uh, man in uh, tengger tengger tribe where udeng udeng is like a head cover from from the uh, okay it's like a sarung but it's a head covering worn by men in uh, java and the aim is to uh, cover the head and show honor uh, tengger udeng is rectangular shape so it means the four cardinal direction folded into a triangle which means birth life and death and another uniqueness one of this tribe is that they have their own calendar apart uh, from the Gregorian calendar. Okay, this is Nadas and this is the uniqueness of the Tingurish tribe. And we are going to the next destination called Warung Lestari Nadas. Warung Lestari Nadas is uh, because now is lunch time, we have to have lunch in Warung Lestari Nadas. Especially in Nadas or Tengeris people, the kitchen or pawan is the heart of each home in Nadas, and they sincerely come guests to warm themselves by the fire while getting acquainted with the family. And there is a philosophy at, uh, about the pawan, and this is the traditional culinary of the Tengeris tribe. And this is like uh, nasi aron. Nasi aron uh, is formed uh, from a uh, uh, white corn with a long journey to have to uh, they have to be nasi aron uh, processed from white corn that uh, grows in Bromo area and compared to other maize which range for three months the this corn is harvest every four until five months and the manufacturing in the process is uh, white corn is shelled first and then crushed until half smooth and soaked in water for about four days, then dried in the sun to dry. And then uh, the corn is pounded again until smooth and filtered, then steamed for about 30 minutes and removed and removed and dosed with hot water and called the aroni. After the aroni finished, steam for another 30 minutes and you can uh, enjoy the aroni. Nasi aron or aron rice, and jangan otes is a traditional culinary from uh, local vegetables in Tengger's uh, tribe. And sambal klotok is like a sambal, but you burn the sambal in the mortar, and you can uh, just uh, uh, the sambal is uh, in the sambal you add some spring onion beside the common sambal and iga bakar is a grilled uh, ribs and sawut kabut is a uh, this is from from the cassava uh, this the shape cassava okay this is the traditional culinary in uh tengger tengger tribe and if you want to try it uh, the traditional culinary you have to uh, say to the your uh, your uh, tour guide to go uh, to accompany you to the warung study members. And then we are going to the next destination called Jemplang. Jemplang is another name of Kos Jemplang, or this is the gate to Mount Bromo, Sme uh, Bromo Tengger Smeru National Park. And this is a vital area because the link between Malang Regency and the National Park, which consists of a climbing post for Mount Semeru, the highest mountain in Java. Semeru is the highest mountain in Java. So this is Jemplang. You can see this is Jemplang and this is the gate. And the right uh, road is uh, to uh, Semeru Mountain, and this is the post, the last post to come to the Bromo uh, Mountain. And the left side is uh, down below, and we go to the uh, Bromo Mountain. And in the left side, uh, Masaka, we can see Widodaren Mountain, the left side. So this is Jepang, and this is... Uh, with your Darwin Mountain in same culture with Bromo. And when you if you see the greenery uh, in front of the fence 
this is uh, there are a uh, final plan and simpang jimplang uh, sometimes called adasan because there are so many adas or final plan here and uh, the jimplang is in transfer bromo from Malang Regency and this place was uh, guarded by Mbah Doreng or the follower of Joko Seger and Rao Anton and there is a relics and Jemplang and still being preserved and used and cared for as manifestation of devotion to the ancestors. Maybe Mas Oka, you can uh, show the photo of Mbah Doreng relics, maybe in Jemplang area. And uh, if you want to see the Milky Way uh, in the night, sometimes people uh, like to have to camp here. Uh, there are some uh, camping area in this uh, in Jemplang, and the natural scenery around Jemplang Jemplang is really quite beautiful when the weather is not foggy. So you can see the Mount Bidodaren and the Savanna and the Lotabius Hill from here. And this is so beautiful. And sometimes you can see the peak of the Mahameru or the peak of Sumeru here. And they say uh, the Jemplang is also built in 2,300 meters above sea level and quite high compared to Bromo Caldera. So the Bromo Caldera is uh, in, the, uh, in below the Simpang Jemplang. So Jemplang is the highest uh, area to go down to the Mount Bromo. And if you want to go to Jimplang, you will you walk towards the path that climbs from there to the viewing post, and it's for beautiful. Uh, if you see the Simpang Jimplang, it's not foggy day. Okay, it can be used of also can be used as a camping ground if you want to enjoy the the beautiful natural atmosphere. And then after we enjoy the natural uh, view from Jimplang. We will go to the next destination called Edelweiss Wonokitri Park. Edelweiss Wonokitri Park is located in Pasuruan Regency. So we across the Mount Bromo Forest and we go to the Edelweiss Wonokitri Park. And Edelweiss is combined of two words in German, namely Edel means uh, noble and Weiss is white. So uh, it means noble white. Or uh, in Sanskrit, uh, language it called Tan Alayu and the meaning neither withered or immortal and a mirror of immortality of the Chengri's ancestor and this is the symbol of true love uh, this is otherwise and this plant is endemic to mountainous zone in high mountains of the archipelago and the flower is used by Chengri resident in traditional, in traditional ceremonies like in Paro celebration there are just this uh, interesting fact about this flower and uh, the edelweiss generally grow no more than one meter and flowers uh, thrive in altitude above 2000 meters above sea level and then uh, the edelweiss if live in the mountainous soil indonesia is different from the edelweiss flower that lives abroad uh, the edelweiss in indonesia called anapolis japanica uh, and uh, otherwise is protected flora and there are some regulation about it and if you want if you want to see the otherwise full bloom you can come between april to september when the rainy season has ended and the sunlight starts to shine intensively again so the wonoki tree pastoral park is uh, was inaugurated in 2000 uh, 18 in conjunction with the Edelweiss Nyadisari Probolinggo Park. So there are two uh, Edelweiss Park, one in Monokitri Pasturuan Regency and one in Nyadisari Probolinggo Regency. Both are part of the National Park buffer zone and function as a means of preserving and cultivating Edelweiss flower for various purposes, including uh, the need for the implementation of traditional ceremonies. And the Wonokitri Edelweiss Park uh, has area about uh, 10,000 meters per square. And these parks are assigned to former groups into regions 
and you can uh, not only treat it by the charming uh, edelweiss flowers and uh, the, ma the management has also provides learning facilities to cultivate this flower uh, starting from uh, seed selection, winning to planting and also provides photo spots and you can take uh, pictures here uh, at viewing post with heart symbol and so many photo spots here and currently there are no interns fee and you can donate as uh, as uh, you, you can pay uh, as you wish uh, to enter this area and when if uh, when you are tired or hungry they provide uh, some dishes called bledus bledus is from from uh, come from uh, corn and aron white corn rice like uh, i said before and chili sambal and paying a package uh, for 30000 rupiah per person so you can enjoy the edelweiss flower here and see the beautiful scenery of the Bromo Mountain here also and learn about how to uh, preserve the uh, uh, Edelweiss flower. And then we are going to the next destination in Probolinggo region. It's called Madakaripura Waterfall or uh, in Indonesia Air Terjun Madakaripura. Uh, it is known locally is one of the most spectacular waterfalls not only in East Java but in Indonesia and it believed to be the final meditation place of military commanders in chief Gajah Mada. Gajah Mada is a great uh, uh, commander in chief in Japanese kingdom of Majapahit in East Java. Uh, and, uh, maybe uh, you heard about Majapahit uh, and the uh, flag of Indonesia is come from the Majapahit flag. Uh, the Majapahit kingdom is unifying the entire, almost entire Indonesian archipelago and almost uh, Southeast Asia. And he has a famous oath uh, called Sumpah Palapa. And it is said that the source of his overwhelming power and abilities lie uh, within the cave of the Madaka, uh, Madakaripura waterfall. And Madakaripura located in not far from Mount Bromo near the village of Sapti in Lombang district at the Probolinggo region. And the spectacular waterfalls lies hidden at the end of Deep Valley in the foothills of the Tengger mountain range. So you, uh, from the parking lot, you have to walk about four kilometers and maybe you can uh, rent motorbike, uh, motorbike taxi and you can pay uh, 10,000 until 15,000 rupiah per person to get to the entrance. And from the entrance, you have to walk about uh, 20 minutes again to the waterfalls. And you uh, have to uh, wear raincoat. So because the water is flows from the cliff and you can, you can get soaked and uh, wet. And uh, be careful with your uh, cell phone and uh, always uh, make a not a plastic a, a cover for a cell phone to avoid from the water and you the entrance fee for the Madakapura, Madakaripura waterfall is about 2000 rupiah per person and the trail is paved the whole way until you reach the fall and the first part of Madakaripura waterfall is uh, actually just lead up to the main waterfall, but it's equally impressive. And the water streams down the large green walls into the river uh, into the river below. And after you make it through the river, you will climb a little section that leads you to the main waterfall. It is a huge and a, a, maybe uh, this is uh, the second highest uh, waterfall in Indonesia. The first highest, uh, the highest uh, waterfalls in Indonesia is Sigura Gura in uh, North Sumatra, in Sumatra, uh, North Sumatra province. And the path uh, ends in a surreal tube like valley where the staggering 200 meters of the waterfalls, Galen was hi uh, highlight the scene. And there are some caves uh, on the wall, which uh, was believed to be the exact location where Gajah Mada performed his last meditation. And the Madakaripura is uh, so beautiful. You can see the height, maybe 360 foot, maybe Masoka. You can see the pole, the 
pool. There is a pool under the uh, waterfall, and it's a green, and it's a cool air, fresh air, and uh, okay, I will suggest you to come to Madakaripura in a dry season because in the rainy season it's uh, quite dangerous because the waterfall is uh, so uh, the stream is very high and strong and this waterfall is inside a narrow key hole amphitheater. It's like amphitheater and from a uh, whole side the water is flowing to down below. And this is the must see a uh, tourist spot. Uh, if you come to Indonesia, you have to come to Madakaripura also. And today uh, uh, we'll finish the day one uh, and stay in the hotel located in Cemorolawang, Nadisari, Probolinggo. It's called Lava View Hotel, Lava View Lodge. And this is the hot, uh, the closest hotel to see the view of Mount Bromo. And here we will rest and unwind before the morning call at 2.30. We ask all visitors to be ready in the hotel lobby at 3 and get ready to go to Suruni Point uh, in the next morning. So now we please have a good rest and we will ready to the next day. Okay, assume you read this is the day two. And we will going to the next destination called Seruni Point. And we have to gather in the lobby in future tea. And don't forget to wear complete equipment such as a jacket, beanie, scarf, and gloves because the temperature here can reach minus one degree Celsius. And during the dry season, uh, we sometimes we can see frost on the leaves if we come in the middle of a dry season around July to September. And the journey from the hotel to Seruni Point is about 30 minutes. And okay, we will going to Seruni Point. Seruni Point is located in 2,400 meters above sea level. Uh, this is a few points, sightseeing point for tourists to see the sunrise uh, above the Mount Bromo. And uh, the Seruni Point have the Great Wall. Uh, a giant wall from uh, 2,256 uh, uh, steps to the top of the Suruni point. And then this is have amazing natural tourism spot. And uh, actually, uh, the sightseeing or the viewpoint in uh, Mount Bromo, uh, there are four uh, viewpoints. Penanjakan, uh, Suruni point, Bukit King Kong, and Bukit Cinta. You can choose one of uh, the four uh, point and today I want to uh, show you the three of uh, uh, the top three of the sightseeing point in Mount Bromo. The first is Seruni point. So the, this is the nearest uh, point view from uh, Probolinggo and then we can go next to the King Kong Hill. King Kong Hill is another location to enjoy the sunrise view and the name Bukit King Kong, uh, King Kong Hill or Bukit King Kong Hill is Bukit, is taken from the cliff sides of this area, which pre like it looks like resembled the head of a King Kong. And the cliff, which is natural carving, is located right behind the tourist guard, guard rail. And the naturally occurring rocks and knees also resemble King's, King Kong's eyes and nose. And this location is in uh, one kilometer below Penanjakan, so the, uh, the King Kong Hill is located in Pasuruan region below the Penanjakan. Uh, this location have another uh, name called Bukit Kedaluh. Uh, Kedaluh in Sanskrit language means the hope or eternal, eternal fertility of the Tengger region. And this is an alternative for tourists if uh, Seruni Point or Penanjakan is uh, full with people and visitors can climb here about 100 to 200 meters to reach King Kong Hill and see the sunrise and the view. And the number of visitors of King Kong Hill or Bukit Kedalu is li uh, limited due to the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pan uh, pandemic, uh, is about 86, uh, 86 people per day. And some the advantage of uh, King Kong Hill 
is easier reach than penanjakan sapu uh, the first uh, few point in penanjakan sapu and one the advantage is sunrise of the King Kong Hill is the lack of visitors in this spot because not so many people know about this spot because the road is quite deceiving compared to other spots and there are a stall so you don't have to worry if you want to get some breakfast after say the sunrise and the view is so amazing uh, but uh, be careful to climb up in this uh, King Kong Hill and the next destination is Bukit Cinta uh, the information board uh, installed by Bromo Tenggar Semeru National Park Center actually called this location as Pasar Pasar is a real Pasar Agung and in fact this is a place for holding traditional ceremonies and the myth of Bukit Cinta, Bukit Cinta is Love Hill in English, Love Hill, starting from the rumors of the community around ancient times. And the Bukit Cinta or Love Hill is meeting place for two pairs of lovers, Joko Segar and Tawo Anteng, and they are an ancestor of the Tengger tribe. And another myth that is uh, not as powerful is if you if a tourist thinks of someone named from climbing to stop uh, to the top of the Bukit Cinta or Love Hill, then the tourist will become eternal partner or a mate with someone whose name is Tau. Maybe you want to try. Okay, the spot is altitude uh, higher for, uh, from uh, Penanjakan. It's about 2,680 meters above sea level. And this is can be reached from Pastoran Regency. Uh, there are a lot a large uh, sign called Love Hill Bromo Tengger Semeru. And you can see Tengger uh, Caldera line with uh, Mount Bromo, Mount Kursi, Mount Widaran, and the view is uh, very wonderful. It's amazing to see uh, the, uh, the beautiful scenery. And now we are going to the next uh, destination in Bromo Tengger Semeru. We call it Teletabis Hill. Uh, Teletabis Hill is in the south of Mount Bromo, uh, from Simpang Jemplang. You can uh, down below and you can see the Teletabis Hill first before you go to another uh, section of the Bromo. But the Teletabis Hill is usually uh, we go to Teletabis Hill after we see the sunrise. And here we will be treated by the beauty of the green meadows that stage widely. And the grasses like the scenery in highlands of uh, New Zealand or Switzerland. Or maybe you watch the television program called Teletubbies. Uh, this is like uh, the hill of uh, the Teletubbies. And Teletubbies Hill is equipped with several infrastructure facilities. and. There are some uh, toilets, public toilets, and stall if you hungry uh, 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 and don't bring any food and beverage, you can buy in the stall. And there are uh, horse riding, you can horse riding here, you can take your pictures and a camping ground and outdoor games with the group. And there are no canopies or tall trees uh, here, so that uh, uh, so I suggest you to bring your sunglasses, a hat, and sunblock, and you have to take a lot of pictures here because this is so beautiful, and the sky is so blue here. Uh, and in uh, Teletubbies Hill, there is a uh, also called Watu Gede. Uh, it's um, but, uh, this is the uh, like preserved by the tribe because the Watu Gede is uh, from Kipanca or grandson of the follower of Joko Segur and Naro Anteng. And Watu Gede is still cared for and guarded as a sacred place and they uh, often give uh, the main offerings in from incest, menyang, and clothed cigarettes. And Watu Gede is quite good. The view from here is very good because the location is higher than other place in Bromo Caldera. And then we have, we going to the next destination called Savannah. 
And next to the Teletubbies Hill, we can see the savanna. Uh, it's a grassland in the south side of Mount Bromo. Uh, it's covering about 10 square kilometer. And you will enjoy the beauty of the savanna with various green views and grass and another plants, such as like a fennel and uh, maybe some uh, edelweiss uh, flower, but you cannot uh, pick the edelweiss uh, uh, flower here. And you can get the edelweiss flower by buy the uh, edelweiss flower uh, in the stall. You cannot uh, pick uh, the natural edelweiss flower here in the savanna because it's uh, prohibited. And you can get some uh, uh, break the regulation here. And however, after we visit the savanna meadow, the atmosphere here become a contrast. What, what originally full of sand and replaced with garden field with beautiful green grass field. So we are going to the Whispering Sand. Whispering Sand is the name of famous sea of sand in Bromo. This is the first expand of the desert. Desert has always been the one of the target of tourists visiting the Bromo Mountain. And this uh, name, Pastir Berbisik or Whispering Sand, is origi originally uh, related to the film in 2001 entitled Pasir Berbisik. Uh, before this film, we call it uh, Sea of Sand or uh, Lautan Pasir in Indonesia. Based on the story of his uh, Mount Romo, the Sea of Sand was from, uh, uh, from the small eruption of two mountains and volcanic materials that thrown to the southeast uh, from large foil and caldera because the depth of caldera uh, volcanic material from further eruption accumulated in and formed as a sea of sand known as whispering sand uh, and now is a tourist uh, attraction there is uh, uh, sometimes when you hear the uh, uh, like uh, sand is whispering so the uh, that's why the Sea of Sand is called Whispering uh, Sand. And while exploring the Whispering Sand, you are allowed to lie down or sit on the ground while feeling the wind. And uh, for some reason, the weather can be quite hot during the day, so it's better to come in the morning or in the evening. Uh, to come to Bromo, you can come uh, to see the sunrise and you can come to Bromo to see the sunset. There's, there's uh, two different uh, occasions and uh, you can choose between to see the sunrise and to see the uh, sunset. But uh, you uh, commonly, uh, the tourists come to Bromo to see the sunrise. And there are Watusina or a rock of lion, large rock, a large rock that looks like a lion. And according to the legend, the this is the part of the past of Mount Bromo and Tengger tribe, and okay, this is uh, okay. Watu Singa is not see nah, This is this is the Watu Singa here. It look like a, a lion from the side, and okay, we are now going to the Mount Widodaren. Mount Widodaren has is the next to Mount Bromo uh, called Widodaren because uh, it comes from the word Widodari or angel, which means angel. And Widodarin literally means the place where the angel descend. And it has altitude of 2,600 meters above sea level. And the main attraction of this uh, mount with the mountain is the existence of a sacred spring called Sendang Widodaren, which is located under a cave around the mountain. And to get to the location, you have to walk uh, about 45 minutes to the spring. And this is believed to be a sacred because the spring falls directly from Widodaren or uh, Mendaktira, uh, the religion. Because of that, water from the springs can be used uh, for daily needs, a part of being a ritual procession. And this is the cave, a cave of Widodaren. And ritual of worship is still 
uh, ongoing today by the local community or by Hindus Tenggara in, in this case. And the, there are some altar as the place of prayer. And before reaching the Widudarin cave, there is one more tourist attraction that is often placed just like that. It's called Sumur Pitu or Seven Well. Uh, but this is actually a crater. And first glance, it's not very visible. Uh, maybe there are no photo about the Sumur Pitu because uh, not every tourist know about this uh, well. And after we go to the Widow Darin Cave, we are going to the next destination called Pura, Pura Luhur Poten. Pura Luhur Poten is next to the Mount Romo. It's down below the Romo Mountain. And it's a temple, Pura is temple for the Hindu Tengger people. And the architecture is mixtures of Japanese and Balinese culture. Uh, and is very thick with Hinduism nuances. And Pura Luhur Poten is the only building that stands in the middle of Whispering Span. Eh, of Whispering Sand, I'm sorry. And it's built uh, in uh, two, uh, year uh, 2000 and have several buildings consisting of three parts, uh, like each mandala, uh, uh, such as main mandala, Madhya Mandala, and Mandala Mista. The Three, uh, the three building uh, in the temple and the temple generally facing west enter the temple to the east as well as a uh, worship and worship facing east towards the rising of the sun uh, Pura Luhur Poten is sacred place for worship and the temple is uh, closely related to the Yatnya Kasado ceremony which is routinely held every year and the people of Tenggara believe that the temple is a, a residence of Isa Sang Hyang Widi or the God, who is the embodiment of Rod Brahma or Brahma. And the Brahma is the three great God in Hinduism besides Shiva and Vishnu. Every day, uh, this temple become a place of worship for the, uh, for the tribe, as well as a tourist attraction among travelers. But for a travel who like photography, you can take a picture of its beauty from the top of the stairs leading to the Bromo crater. And to get to uh, Pura Poten Bromo, you have to cross the Sea of Sand. You can travel, uh, you can walk or rent or uh, off, up, or rent a horse. And you have to include your hat, sunblock, and umbrella in your least belongings because the Sun is very hot here and don't miss the mineral water. This is the statue in the temple. And behind the Luha, Luha, Pura Luhur Poten is Mount Batok. And this is the Mount Bromo. And now we are going to the Bromo Crater. And before we go to Bromo Crater, we will see the video of the crater. the videos and here is this uh, the destination we are waiting for the bromo crater and the bromo crater has diameter of uh, about uh, 800 meters from north to south and 600 meters uh, from east to west and the danger area is a circle with a radius of four kilometer from the center of bromo crater and it located in the middle of the sea of sand and Bromo crater will clearly visible 
from Mount Batok. Mount Batok is near uh, the Bromo Mountain. And the Bromo crater uh, still active until now. So sometimes uh, the national park is prohibited for the visitors because uh, the explosion of the Bromo Mountain. And from the parking lot, uh, you can walk to the Bromo crater or you can ride a horses. Uh, it's a long journey. I think uh, you have to walk about uh, 20 minutes until 30 minutes. It's quite uh, hot in a day. Uh, you will see a lot of chip and horses and the horse uh, rate is about 1,000 rupiah until 100,000 and 50, eh, 150,000 rupiah per uh, person for return trip. And tips for you, uh, you have to pay after arriving back to the starting point of the jeep parking because if you pay uh, when you arrive to the stairs, they will go <laughs> and you have to walk again to the starting point. And arriving at the starting point of the climb, you will see hundreds of steps uh, that will lead tourists to the top of the crater. And you have to prepare your stamina because the number has reached about 250 steps and it's quite uh, high. And maybe you will uh, fatigue or uh, like, oh, you have to bring your mineral water and wear your hat or maybe uh, bring your umbrella. And this hike about 15 minutes. This is the Mount Batok. This is the view from the stair. And down below is the Pura Luhur Poten. Okay, we'll see the crater. When you reach the top of Bromo Crater, you will see a crater. Uh, it's a beautiful scenery. It's the center of attention of visitors here. It is the starting point to climb up uh, the stairs. This is, uh, there are stairs here. And you have to be careful because this place is quite dangerous. You, uh, and you have to pay attention for your safety. And it's said that according to the legend of Mount Bromo is originated from eruption of Mount Tengger with altitude of 4,000 meters above sea level. And then there was a large and terrible eruption that created a large caldera and sea of sand. And in the middle of the caldera, there is an active volcano which named Bromo or Brahma. Brahma is the name of a god for Hinduism. This is the stairs. You have to uh, walk uh, up to the stairs. And the crater of Mount Bromo is the last place to throw offerings to Lord Brahma when they have there's the ceremony of Nyatnya Kasada. This is done because it is tradition of the tribe and to honor the ancestor. Uh, the aim of the Nyatnya Kasada is to aim the ancestor and to bring uh, prosperity for them. And it's a way to expressing gratitude to God for having been given uh, an abundant harvest. So this is the creator. You can walk around the crater, but you have to be careful because this is very dangerous. Uh, there are some fans uh, near the crater, but uh, about 70% of the crater is not uh, there's, There are no uh, fans over, so you have to walk carefully. And in this location, you can smell the sulfur. Uh, and sometimes uh, people or tourists uh, throw the offerings to the crater tools, just like a flower or maybe uh, corn. Uh, and uh, every day, uh, the Tengger tribe is offering the flower to the crater too. And in this uh, pandemic, uh, the, there is a regulation and the tourists cannot uh, climb up to the crater. And so this is prohibited during the pandemic uh, era to climb to the Mount Bromo. So the tourists just uh, go to the same view like Penanjakan, Bukit Kedalu, uh, Whispering Sand, and Teletubbies Hill or Sakana, but they cannot climb to the crater. And this is the last destination 
of the Bromo Mountain and back to the Malang and we will go uh, across the Nadas and maybe you have you want to take a rest in Nadas and maybe uh, have uh, and uh, have uh, your night in Nadas there are some several homestay in Nadas and with a uh, hot uh, water so you can come to Nadas and you will enjoy the the scenery too and the welcoming and the uh, the Nada tribe and you can see the their uh, daily activity uh, as a farmer and as a tribe and this is uh, their virtual tour maybe you have you want to ask anything about this virtual tour maybe Mbak Pony from the participant who want to asking about the in virtual about the Mount Bromo or maybe the tribe or maybe the traditional uh, or, or something and before we go we have to get uh, our kids from the Bromo you can buy Edelweiss flower or, or you can buy Pokak syrup Pokak it's like a uh, traditional traditional drinks for, uh, from the Romo and you can buy potato chips because the in uh, Romo Tenggara Semeru there are farmers is uh, cultivate the potatoes and for Edelweiss uh, it costs about uh, 1000 rupiah until 2000 uh, rup 2000 rupiah per bucket so you can uh, grab and pay to the seller in the stall around the Bromo Mountain. Okay, this is the last uh, destination. Uh, I will bring back to Mbak Foni. Okay, thank you, Miss Dini, for bringing us to Bromo event virtually. That's an interesting experience. Uh, before we move to the Q&A session, I would like to remind you guys to fill the attendance list through the link that given by Mrs. Nurina in the chat box. Okay, now let's move on to some questions and answers. Would anyone like to ask any questions? You can ask directly or maybe type your question. In the chat box, I will read it for you. Maybe I'm not so clear to the Bromo Tengger Semeru. You can ask anything. Okay, uh, I would like to inform you about the fee entrance for the Bromo Tengger Semeru uh, National Park. Uh, usually, when you go to Bromo, uh, we ride the jeep and you can pay uh, for uh, one jeep it's about uh, 1000 1 million uh, rupiah 1 million rupiah for uh, five to six people in in one jeep and this is including the tour guide and including the fee uh, the entrance fee uh, if you want to go to bromo by yourself uh, you can buy uh, the entrance fee by online it's about uh, 29,000 rupiah uh, for local in weekday and 34,000 rupiah for locals uh, in the weekend and for the international visitors uh, for weekday it's about uh, 220,000 uh, rupiah per person and in the weekend you have to pay for international visitors. You have to pay three thousand three hundred and twenty thousand rupiah per person. And uh, the driver will pick you at Malang uh, at one a.m. Or if you uh, stay in like uh, Lava View Lodge, you have to uh, gather in the lobby in two thirty. Because from Malang, it. Uh, it's quite uh, far, uh, it's about 30 kilometers, so have to uh, prepare 
uh, at uh, 1 a.m. and the driver will pick you up and go to the uh, Bromo Mountain. If you want to see the sunrise and if you want to see the sunset, maybe the driver will pick you up at uh, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. and you can see the sunset uh, from the Bromo Mountain. That's all. Maybe there are some questions. Uh, okay, Miss Dini, here's a question from Mr. Dihin. He asks, if I'm not mistaken, we can write the course around. Is it yes. true? Yes, we can write the course around, uh, especially uh, in uh, this hill uh, and in Whispering Sand and from the uh, Pura Luhur Potent to the starting point or the stairs of the uh, Bromo Crater. And it's quite uh, not so cheap if and you have to bargain to the handler because if you don't know about the price they can raise raise up the the, uh, the price so when you get the horse riding uh, from the pura Luhut poten to the stair it costs uh, 100,000 until 150,000 rupiah and you have to pay at the Lupura Luhur Potent or the starting point before uh, you go to the stairs uh, for your safety because if, uh, if you pay in the stair uh, maybe the handle and the horse is gone and you have to walk uh, to the parking lot and it's uh, quite uh, a long journey because uh, uh, the sand and uh, hot uh, uh, on the day Okay, thank you, Ms. Dini. Uh, does that help answer your question, Mr. Dihin? And uh, if you come, if you go to Bromo from Malang, uh, especially from the hotel, uh, usually the hotel will provide you with great breakfast. So you go with the drivers and the jeep and the hotel will bring you your breakfast so you can uh, take a breakfast in Bromo because uh, the sun rises it's uh, at 5 30 now and you have to wait from 3 a.m to 5 uh, to 5 30 it's a long uh, journey and you have to uh, take a breakfast and bring your, your beverage or maybe bring your food uh, to provide your Hunger. Okay, Miss Dini. Um, maybe here's some question from me. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, here's there's someone I want to ask. Wait a moment, Miss Michelle. I want to raise her hand. Okay. Um, Miss Michelle. Okay. Good. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I just want to thank the whole team for um, for this virtual trip to Mount Roma. The place is so wonderful, but it's very unfortunate that we're not able to go there. And I have a few questions, ma'am, regarding the tour. First, um, is there a direct flight or do you have any idea if we have a direct flight from Philippines to East Java where Mount Roma is? Okay. Uh, if you come to East Java from Philippines, there are a flight from Manila to uh, Surabaya first. And from Surabaya, you have to uh, ride uh, the car, a uh, rental car, or maybe bus, or maybe a train to Malang. And uh, from Malang, you rent a jeep and go to Bromo. There are four uh, directions to uh, four gates for uh, if you want to come to uh, Bromo, if you want to come from Malang, you can come from Malang, you can come from uh, Pasuran Regency, and you can come from uh, the Probolinggo Regency. You can choose between the four gates. And uh, the most uh, I think a uh, few is from Malang Regency because there, uh, there is a Nagas village, and the, this is the highest uh, village in East Java, actually. And uh, the the view is uh, there are a lot of waterfalls in uh, Malang Regency, like uh, Coban uh, 
Kelang Waterfalls, uh, Rainbow Waterfalls, like I said before, and there is uh, Trisula Waterfalls and uh, Angel Waterfalls and Giant Waterfalls, and you can uh, get to the Apple Orchid in Poncokusumo near the uh, Rainbow Waterfalls, and you can eat apples uh, as much as you want, and you just pay about fifteen thousand rupiah per person. And you can see uh, apple trees and how to cultivate and how to plant uh, the apple trees. Yeah. There are so many uh, uh, enchanting uh, tourist spot uh, if you go to, uh, to Bromo from Malang. I suggest you to go to, uh, from Malang. Thank you so much, ma'am. And last question. Um, since all of these attractions are are done outdoors or are natural attractions, what is the best month that you can recommend for us to visit the place? This place, as I mean. Uh, the natural ceremony, or maybe can you? Uh, uh sorry, because this these places are often. Uh, are are outdoors? Am I right? For example, the falls, the mountain, and what is the best place to visit uh, Bromo? Uh, sorry, best month to visit Bromo. Best month to visit Bromo. Okay. Yes. Uh, I suggest you to uh, go to Bromo in a dry season. Uh, it between April to September because uh, the weather is uh, clear, it's clear, not uh, so rainy and they are not so foggy and you, uh, but you have to wear your jackets and wear beanie and shawl because, uh, because uh, the weather is uh, sometimes below uh, zero uh, centigrade, sometimes, and sometimes you have uh, frost in the leaves and the, I think this is the best uh, month to see uh, Mount Bromo. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Miss Michelle. Okay, we have another question from Mr. Amin Widuru. Bromo is active volcano. How we know condition of activity that day we are at there? Uh, usually the we uh, we can see in in the a government application called MKG, MKG is what is it? It's like uh, there is information for uh, the tourists before we go to the Mount Bromo, especially when you uh, book the online ticket. Uh, there will uh, some information about the Bromo Mountain, and when the Bromo Mountain is active, or we we are prohibited uh, to go to there, and the booking online is. Uh, close and we cannot go to the Bromo Mountain. It's related like because the ticket now are online, uh, not like uh, years before. We can go uh, in and out uh, any way you please, but now you can. You have to book online in uh, the website. The website called um, bookingbromo.bromotangersemeru.org. You can see in the website if you want to book your, your ticket online. I will type it. Okay, here is the online the website. If you want to go to Dromo by yourself. You can book in bookingbromo.bromotenggersmeru.org. And in the uh, pandemic era, you have to bring your, uh, maybe the vaccine certificate or like a PCR test, uh, PCR test uh, result. So uh, this is the, uh, the new regulation uh, due to the pandemic uh, nowadays. Oh, okay, Miss Dini. There also okay. a question from Mr. Okay, oh, no? uh, okay. to uh, the for women, uh, how to use tarung is uh, determine their uh, status. But for men, there are no uh, symbol of status for men. 
but uh, the symbol of courage uh, and the symbol of uh, when you go to the uh, ceremony or you go with the, the daily activities, there are a different type of how to wear the sarung. Just that, just that uh, for men, but for women, it symbolizes uh, their status uh, in social. So there is no different status between the men. Yes, just for women. Uh, so when you see the women in Tenggar uh, wear the sarong, you can you 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 just know oh there is a girl and they they don't have a boyfriend or she is a married woman or she is a widow. You can see from and you know from the how they uh, wear the sarong. Okay, that's pretty unique. <laughs> okay, uh, Miss Dini, uh, one question maybe for me? Yes. Uh, how's, um, you know, the the impact of this pandemic in Bromo? Uh, nowadays, uh, Bromo is quite empty and this is, uh, the tourism industry uh, suffered uh, for a lot, a lot of losses uh, in this pandemic. And many jeeps driver as uh, homesteads have changed their job to like uh, sell their goods or yeah they they don't have a uh, daily activity like uh, like before and uh, the tourist is uh, the number of tourists is limited and the ticket have to be booked from online webs uh, online and from the website so this is unfortunately uh yeah uh i hope the pandemic is over and we can go to bromo like usual like before and because there are a lot of people in bromo uh in Tenggar, bromo Tenggar Smeru uh, national park is uh depend on the tourism uh, for day for day life Okay, here's uh, one question, and I think this is the last question because after this, we will move to the quiz station. Okay, I will read it for you, Miss Dini. Here's a question from Miss J. Okay, okay. Okay, since we missed the chance to go and present in the future, if travel is permitted, is there a possibility of going there through this program to lessen the expenses? Oh, oh. Uh... And maybe the, uh, from Aturin, maybe Aturin will have uh, some program to lessen the expenses. And I suggest you to uh, contact the Aturin to have uh, the, apa, the future travel. And maybe the program is uh, provided by Aturin. Or maybe you want to backpack, backpacking to. Uh, Expecting to the Bromo and it will lessen the expenses, I think. Solo traveling. From Compact, I think. Uh, maybe from ITS can answer the question. Um, if from Aturin, uh, they have provide a tour guide in every every city, and also you can visit um the Aturin website. I have shared it. In the chat box, you can find there. So they are pro also provide you some uh, recommendation of what tourism destination, tourism objects that you can visit in every city in Indonesia. Maybe you can check it out. Okay, so we are going to move to the quiz station. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for the question and Miss Dini for your answers. Thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much. Okay, we are. We'll start the quiz. Okay, so you can find the link on in the chat box. You can click it in the quiz. We will have a quiz by Quizzes platform. Please join it and fill out your name, your full name, and your real name, of course. <laughs> So there will be three winners uh, for this quiz and the winners will get a 
Virtual Tour Voucher by Atreen. Here's how to join the crisis.
Okay, congratulations to Mr. Dewa, Mr. Amin Widodo, and Dua Desa. Okay, congratulations. I will show you okay. how to claim the prizes. Please, uh, Mas Oka. Okay, so you can contact Ririn Aturin through one of the following ways. You can DM Aturin Instagram or send a WhatsApp message to this number. You can screenshot this uh, screen. Okay, um, next. I think we are in finally in this the end of the event. It's a photo time. Uh, please to all participants, if you don't mind to turn on your camera, we will take a photo together. Okay, um, Masoka will help us to take the picture, take a screenshot, I'm so sorry. Okay guys, if you don't mind, please turn on the camera. Okay, Masoka. Okay, thank you for me. Okay, everyone, we let's start the photo session. Yeah, we have two pages. Okay, we'll let's start for the first page. Okay, three, two, one, cheese. Okay, let's the second page. Three, two, one, cheese. Okay, thank you. I give back to Miss Pony. Okay, thank you, Miss Oka. Okay, we are finally come to the end of this event. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. If in getting this event, uh, I might made mistakes or offend someone here, please forgive me. And I will return this event to Mrs. Diana from ITS. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Miss Pony, and thank you to Miss Dini for a very insightful presentation. And we recommend to students to visit uh, Mount Bromo someday because you can enjoy the beauty and also the knowledge. But of course, after the pandemic is over. And this is uh, the end of today's event for everyone. Please don't forget to fill the attendance list for today's class. All right, thank you ladies for uh, and gentlemen. We hope everyone stay safe and healthy and see you later. Thank you so much for everyone. Yeah, and we will close the screen. So Mas Oka. Yeah, see you later. We will close in three, two, one.